Good morning. Your in-depth report on copper suggests that we could see an additional 1 million tons in the next couple of years. On current form, how key is China to that fine balance between supply and demand over the next couple of years? Thank you, Rod. Well, well China is, 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 is very key to the, the whole copper supply-demand balance. Um, the country consumes more than half of the world's copper, um, so its economy is, you know, has a direct impact on, on copper demand. The first half, we saw demand actually stay pretty robust uh, out of China with uh, decarbonization drivers like electric vehicles, infrastructure, actually offset a lot of the weakness that we've seen in the property market. But I guess going forward, the risk is that um, if the malaise in the property market continues, it starts to have a broader impact on the economy, namely through consumer sentiment. And we start to see vehicle sales, consumer durables, and other sectors start to, uh, to take a hit. Um, that means that you know, copper demand we're expecting to be you know, plus 2% drops below that 2% threshold. And then surpluses in the copper market, which we expect to be around 100 to 150,000, quickly turn into 300, maybe 400,000 tons, uh, which, are, which are quite significant. We last saw them during 2020, during the um, COVID-19 pandemic. And then when we look into the medium term, uh, on the one hand, you argue that energy transition is liable to ramp demand. Um, but on the other, it's becoming more difficult to um, achieve permitting for green and brownfield sites. How inflationary could that be? Sure. So just to just to add on to that point, it, it is becoming more difficult to 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 permit projects, both from an environmental perspective, and also to nail down agreements with host governments who you know want their fair share of what's in there in in the ground. So just to be clear, there's enough copper in the ground. It's just becoming more challenging to get to get it out of the ground. Mining companies as a general rule, look to 15% return IRR on their projects. It does vary. But for that 15%, we, we need a copper price of around $7,500 a ton, which is around $500 to $700 below where the current spot price is. If we see delays, and these you know delays are perpetuated, mining companies are going to start looking for a higher return. And that is going to mean that they're going to start to need to see a higher copper price on the screen to green light these projects. And then that might turn into somewhere closer to $8,500 a ton. So yes, so the, you know, the longer these projects are delayed, it could be quite inflationary. Great. And then maybe finally, as we look out over that next couple of year period, what are some of the key catalysts and milestones that we should be keeping an eye out for? So the first thing that, that, that we need to look at in the very near term is, is supply recovery. Um, so you know, we're going to be looking at the, uh, the copper miners' uh, production results early next year when they start to report, and we're going to see, you know, have they delivered on their guidance, which so far they haven't really been very good at doing. And that'll give us as an indication that they have recovered from the, the COVID-19 pandemic issues, which have been dragging on for a number of years. Secondly, again, on the supply side, we're going to be looking at, you know, approvals. Have they approved new projects? Um because that's going to be key to filling the gap that we see later on in the decade. Um, and also more near term, you know, what's their guidance for 2024? They sort of give you an inkling um, last year, but we know, you know, we, that needs to be nailed down to see that we, we all are actually going to deliver um, new supply. And then on the, on the demand side, you know, one of the key drivers we talked about China is, is the state grid. You know, it, it, it's, that alone can account for 15% of copper demand globally. So we're looking to see what their budget is for the next year. And clearly, if it's higher than last year, that should be a reasonably good signal for demand in the country. Brilliant. Grant, thanks very much for your time. Appreciate it.